What's up guys, this is Brother Micah, and today I'm going to be talking about the message that the devil doesn't want you to hear. Alright, so I've been waiting to give you guys this message because I know this is something that the devil has been working hard and trying to prevent this word from getting out. So what I'd like for you to do is make sure that you share this video, get it out to as many people as you can. Don't forget to subscribe also because it's very important that we get messages like this in these last days. We're going to start though with the lesson in James the first chapter starting at verse 2 and it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So the scripture is telling us that we need to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations. A lot of people are, are under the misconception that just because you're tempted, you've automatically sinned. But this is not true because Jesus himself was tempted yet without sin. So it's not a sin to be tempted. In fact, the scripture tells us we should count it all joy when we're tempted, meaning that we should be happy at the fact that God considers us worthy to allow us to go through the temptation. And it's only because God believes we're able to bear it. The the scripture went on to let us know that the trying of our faith worketh patience. We go through temptations because our faith is being tried to see if we truly trust in God or if we're leaning on our own understanding or our arm of flesh. The Bible also says, let patience have our perfect work. Why? So that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. When you learn to go through the temptation and overcome it, you realize that Christ and God is your all in all and you're entire. You don't have any need of anything else because they're able to keep you and secure you. Let's go ahead and drop down to verse 12 of the same chapter. It says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried, he he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away with his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. So the word tells us, listen, blessed is the man that endures temptation. You know, because when you're tried, you're going to receive a crown of life from the Lord for all those that love him. Everybody is going to go through temptation. And as I stated earlier in the video, it's not a sin to be tempted. It's what you do with the temptation that will determine whether it leads you to sin or not. And we find that as we continued reading in the chapter. It said, don't let anybody say they're tempted of God because God can't be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man. It says all of the people that are tempted are tempted when they're drawn away of their own lust and enticed. Meaning there is something within you that the devil has to use to try to tempt you. And this is the thing that he doesn't want people to understand. That it's things that are within us that he tries to use to cause us to sin against God. The Bible even said it, as we read earlier, that a man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and it's enticed. It says, when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Meaning that at the moment of conception, it's going to grow, and eventually it's going to bring you to a spiritual death and ultimately a physical death. Now, I want to read something so that you can have further understanding, because again, these are things that the enemy is working hard and trying to prevent the church from knowing. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. And it says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So the Bible says there's no temptation is taking you that's not common to all men. Everybody, no matter what their walk of life, is going to be tempted by something. So there's nothing that you can say is a special case that only you struggle with because there's somebody else out there who probably struggles with the same thing. 
But the promise is made that God is not going to allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able to bear it. And it even went as far as to say with the temptation, he's going to make a way to escape. It's like having the ultimate cheat code when playing a video game. God is automatically going to have a way for you to escape to get out of the temptation. It's your job to make sure that you're looking for the escape route and not falling into the traps of Satan. So I wanted to give you a biblical example and more scripture to kind of break this down and bring the point home how the temptation is something that is drawn from within and how the devil will try to use that to get you to sin against God. So I'm going to give you one of the ultimate examples of scripture of one who failed, which was Judas Iscariot. When we go to John the 13th chapter, starting at verse one, it says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end and supper being ended the devil having now put it into the heart of judas iscariot simon's son to betray him. So as we read those first verses, we recognize that Christ realized he was coming to the end of his physical ministry here on earth. And while he was getting ready and preparing for these things, he had a meal with the disciples, the final supper. But we realize that at this point, according to verse two, Satan had put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him. Now let's drop down to verse 21 so that we can go ahead and figure out why that's relevant to the topic at hand. Verse 21 says, when Jesus had thus said he was troubled in spirit and testified, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples began to look one on another, doubting of whom he spake. So we find a situation where Christ let them know, hey, one of you are going to betray me. And the disciples began wondering, Lord, is it me? Who's going to betray you? Is it me? And as they continue to ask these questions, they beckon John to ask Jesus, who is it that's going to betray you? And that's where we're going to pick up in the next verse. Verse 26, it says, Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, Thou thou doest, do quickly. We realize that after he handed him the sop, which was bread, he said, whoever I dip this bread to and give it to, that's who's going to betray me. And when he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the Bible tells you, then Satan entered into him. So we wanted to bring this point out because first it had to be committed in the mind. Judas had to be tempted in the mind and he allowed it to get into his heart as we read in verse two of that chapter. Then by the time that we get down here to this verse in verse 27, we see that when he got the sop, Satan was able to enter into him because Judas had already made an accord in his mind and in his heart that he was going to betray Christ. Now, verse 29 says, for some of them thought that because Judas had the bag that Jesus said unto him, buy those things which we have need of against the feast, that he should go and do something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out and it was night. So as soon as he got the sop, Satan entered in and he went to do what he had to do. Now, this is where it's relevant to us even today. The disciples didn't understand the betrayal. They didn't understand what Judas was doing. They thought he was going out to buy something or to do something because according to the scriptures that we just read, Judas had the bag. Judas was known to be the one that kept the money. And we're going to read a couple of other verses to get an understanding of how Satan used Judas's love for money to tempt him to want to betray Christ ultimately. All right, so we read where Judas had the bag. Judas was the one that kept the money. When you look throughout scripture, you're gonna find that Judas was present. He heard when Jesus told him, no man can serve two masters. He's gonna love one and hate the other. You can't serve God and mammon. He heard where Jesus would tell them, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt. He heard the message where Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his only soul? He had to have been present to see him talk to the rich young ruler and talk about how he gave how he needed to give away everything to follow after him judas was exposed to all of this truth all of this teaching from jesus christ himself yet he still yielded to the temptation and his love for the money his love for the bag overcame him and caused him to sin against the holy one of israel against jesus christ 
When we go to St. John 12, verse 3 through 6, the Bible tells us then when Mary anointed the feet of Jesus, it says, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This said he, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. So we find that when she anointed the feet of Christ and used this expensive ointment, it was Judas out of the 12 that had a problem with what was being done. He pretended as if he cared for the poor, but the Bible said he was the one that kept the bag and he was a thief. He didn't care about the poor. He was worried about how much money was just spent on that ointment that he could have profited from had they given it to him to try to raise money for the poor. Judas was motivated by the bag. That was the tempting factor that Satan used against him. Despite all the messages that Christ taught about the finances, Judas never took it to heart. Instead, he loved the money. Therefore, that was the thing that the devil tempted him with. When you go to Matthew, the 26th chapter, reading verse 14 through 16, it says, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. So it was put into the heart of Judas Iscariot as we read later on at the supper. But at this point in his mind, he had covenanted and decided, I'm going to betray him. And he looked for an opportunity. And it was at the final supper that he jumped on the chance. Satan had put it in his heart. He had took the sop and then Satan entered him and he was gone. Let's go to another scripture. When we go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26, it says that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. People don't realize that they're taken captive, snare of the devil, and he can get them at his will whenever he wants when they're on his territory. This is why we must be born again, why we must be saved, so that we can have power over the enemy. Jesus was the one that said, behold, I give you power. And we have power over all of the power of the enemy when we belong to Jesus. When we don't, he is able, the enemy is able to take us captive at his will and he's able to tempt and lure you astray and cause you to add sin on top of sin and ultimately when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. But let's go back because we started in James, so we're going to end in James. When you go to James the fourth chapter and we're going to pick up around verse 7. It says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. The scripture says that if you submit to God, resist the devil, he has to flee. If you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. It says, wash your hands, ye sinner, purify your mind, change the way you think and begin to resist the devil and you'll have power over him. And this is something the devil doesn't want the people to know. He don't want you to know that you can have power over him, that you can resist temptation and that you can submit to God so that he loses power and authority from over your life. I pray that this message is a blessing to you and that you'll continue to share it to help get the word out. The enemy is going to tempt you with things you're familiar familiar with. Judas loved money. Judas kept the bag. So that is naturally what the enemy tempted him with. There's no reason for him to come to you with crack cocaine if crack cocaine is your weakness. If yours is women, he's going to use women. If yours is alcohol, he's going to use alcohol. If yours is stealing, he's going to use the opportunity. All of these things are the way he tempts you, but you have power over them by the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If you resist the devil, he will flee. And the Bible said with the temptation, God makes a way to escape. Continue to check out other videos as we continue to bring these lessons, but this is going to conclude the message that the devil doesn't want you to hear.